hopefully be, well this is what was lectured last week through the two two lessons I gave you on 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 YouTube so we'll start out with a fast review we'll do a couple of these let's look at this first one now it's exponential and there's a couple questions you have to ask yourself. Is it a growth or is it a decay? It is a growth. The, don't all of you let Jonathan take all the glory. Somebody else tell me why it's a growth. How do you know? Oh, hold on. I, I kind of remember this, but I just need to Do I shut up or? Because of the one? No, it's fine. Oh, yeah, it's Not because of the up. one. Oh. No, no, you got a point. It's higher yeah. than the one. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll ask that question in a minute. He's got something good going on there, but I want to know why this is a growth as opposed to oh, a decay. Is it, is it higher than one? Exactly. Oh, that's yeah, probably yeah. what he meant. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This three implies it's going to be a growth. So if I just do a generic growth and not pay attention to any of the values there, I would always realize that zero, one has to be on the graph. Zero, one. Because anything to the power of Anything to the power of zero is one. So in other words, I'd be pretending to be looking at something like this. Y equals three to the X. Isn't it also the Y intercept? It is the Y intercept in this case. That's right. But it's always the Y intercept. So if I'm just looking at a regular, any kind of growth problem, then I'm going to be looking at something that as you go to the right, it gets higher and higher. And then as it go, keeps going there, there is a very good generic graph of what y equals 3 to the x looks like. The reason that 0, 1 is in the graph is because if x is 0, the y-intercept, anything to the 0 power is 1. But you need to realize, though, I don't know if that's really my graph. That would be like the graph that I would give myself credit for close enough for the government. But it could have looked like this. I get another one going. Could have been this. Or it could have been even this. As long as I keep going through that same place. Or it could even be silly. It could be... But it's the same idea. They're all the same idea. So generically, you could pick any one of those and say it's an exponential growth problem. But that minus two, though. All right, now let's go back up and look at the original problem. I think I will leave... I think I will leave... Let's see, get this to... Oh, what am I doing here? Get rid of... Okay, I'm going to leave that one there. And let's look at my original problem. It's an exponential growth that does what? What does this plus one cause it to do? Um, go forward one? Oh, yeah. Go like... No, wait. Not forward. It was the opposite, right? Go left one, right? Was it go left one? I don't know. Does it, is it left one? Is it... I, I don't... It's either the minus 2 that's the opposite, or it's either the plus 1 that's the opposite. Help him out, guys, because he's, he's been wrong. So now this is your chance to do the steal. Okay, doesn't the plus 1 just kind of dictate how steep it is? Nope. Like where it starts... Where this it base starts. depicts how steep it's going to be. Those different graphs I drew oh. could have been a 2, a 3, a 5, a 7, a point, uh, a 1.1. 1. 1. Could have been the black one that I'd done. Plus one means when you get done looking at this function, you move oh, up one. one. A move up. You move oh, so up move one. Up. It's on the outside of the exponential part. That's how I know that it was going to move up one. Now I got to look at what's happening inside the, the graph here. What's happening inside the three to the x? What else am I doing to it? What does this... Uh, Minus 2 cause it to do. Right. It starts raising 2 units to the right. It, it moves 2 to the right. That's the opposite one. Yes. When it's connected to the x, we think opposite. So instead of saying move 2 to the left because there's a minus, no, no, no. We say 2 to the right because it's opposite. So what I'm going to do is realize that this basic graph that I drew in red, here was the horizontal asymptote, right? That has to rise up how many? 
So let me go and redraw it in green right up one. So here goes. That's moving up one. What would that be again? Like white one? That because of the plus one, everything has to move up. No, I know, but what was the equation of the y? So it's y equals one. Or x equals one. Oh, the equation is y equals to one. Yes. This dot that I put here has to move. The original basic graph, that would also have to move. How would it have to move? Up one. Up one and two to the right. So what I'm going to do with that red dot, I'm going to move up one and move it two to the right. It really is here. So I'm going to take my black color and I'm going to make sure that I use the new asymptote. It should be running very close to the asymptote. As I go to the left, it's going very close to this. As I get closer and closer to that green point, there it goes, has to go to the green point. Then it's going to go up somehow. We're moving the y intercept plus 1, right? So it's going to be 1, comma 2. Well, that point, okay, I'm glad what you said. It's actually 2, oh, yes. it's actually 2, comma 1. Yeah. This is 2 comma 1, but it's not the y-intercept. It was the y-intercept before when it was 0 comma 1. And if I add 1 to the 0 that's, and add 2 to the 1, no, I'm sorry, I add 2 to the 0. Wait, so are you saying that the green point is 2 comma 1 and not 2 2? I don't know. It is 2 2. Isn't it? It's 2 2. Oh, yeah, 2 2. Good catch. See, told you. 2 2. So I added 2 going uh, to the right, and then 1 to the 1. Yeah, 2, 2 becomes that new point. All right. So really, I don't need to have that red graph. In a sense, that red graph might be just messing me up, including the old asymptote. wasn't helping me either anymore. So I'll just move it out of the way so it doesn't bother me anymore. I don't know why that's not wanting to erase there. It was erasing just fine. And feel free to, to fill in any information. I keep hitting, I keep hitting the y and the x axis. Okay, so that's a pretty good picture now. It's, it's probably not perfect yet because I didn't get any other points to it. Matter of fact, here's a point that he's going to ask for, the new y-intercept. Uh, 0, 2? No, I don't no, think so. It's, yeah. it's going to be a little weirder than that. But we know that the x has to be 0, right? Yeah, that's a good point. So what I'm doing is checking f of 0. That will be 3 to the 0 minus 2 so plus, one to the plus 1. What is 3 to the negative 2? 3 to the negative 2 is 1 over, no, wait, 1 over 9. Yeah, it's, it, it changes it to 1 over 3 squared, which is 1 over 9 plus 1. What is 1 over 9? How big is 1 over 9? And I still have calculators sitting here, so it shouldn't be hard for somebody to tell me, especially somebody who hasn't said anything. That would just be 1.1111. Uh, so something yeah. like that. 1 .1 1 1 1 this turns into 1.1111 forever. I'm just going to write 1 and 1 ninth. How about that? How about I go here at 0, comma, 1 and 1 ninth. Or if you don't like that, what's another name for one and one ninth? Could you say ten ninths? Ten ninths. Could I say zero comma ten ninths? Yep. And one over one ninth is easy. Whatever you like. <laughs> and if you do the decimals, I wouldn't mark it wrong either. As long as you gave me three decimals, you went one point one one one. I'd take one point one one one. Who's going to know the difference on the graph between one point one 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 versus one point one 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 two? Wait, no, nobody. It's one over nine plus one. That's one point one one one. Oh, yeah. yeah. All right. Look at that black graph. Oh, by the way, let's find that one and one ninth. Let's see. Am I close to it? Yeah. One. I'm actually too high. Oh, yeah, yeah. You oh. see? You see? I'm actually a little too high. Um, that means I was lying. Wait, wait. 
yeah, it should be a little lower. So if I want to make a better graph, which in reality I don't really care too much, I'd have to try to make it come down just a little bit. But I'm not going to penalize you if you had it down here. Yeah, that's good enough. It's good enough, guys. What's the domain of that picture? All real numbers greater than, than one. I disagree. Oh. Can I have a female voice out there? I know. So I should hear one of them once in a while. Okay. Natalie? Oh, I'm dumb. Uh, I feel dumb. <laughs> yeah, you're going to really, you're gonna feel really dumb when Natalie tells you the answer. What's yeah, the domain, no, Natalie? No, sir, it stopped, uh, it's not moving? No, it just, nope, it just died. Wow. The rest of pepperonis. Wow. <laughs> you like pepperonis? No. What, what, what does that have to do with this? Good you know what? It actually even disconnected from my uh, uh, the options to to add it. It actually just the program stopped on my computer. So let me pause the recording. All right, back online. Natalie is in the process of telling us the domain of this exponential function, and she's right. Look to the left. Look to the right. Every x is being used. There's one way of saying all real numbers. Now the range. The range is not all real numbers because the range are only the y values. There's something on the range. There's something different. Well, that's just what I wrote on from this. You can ignore that. The range, Miss Simone, what y values are in the graph? Are all y values that you could possibly see are in the graph or is it restricted? Yeah, what, what's the lowest y value? One. Yep, what's the highest y value? Infinity. So that's right, 1 to infinity. All right. Are there any asymptotes, Jonathan? Uh, just one. Where is it at? One y is equal to 1 would be the new asymptote. And Gibran, when is this function increasing? When does it get higher and higher and higher? Does it, is it always? Yeah, always. Always. Even out here, it looks pretty level. Looks pretty level. Or is it really increasing, but so small we can't tell? Constant, so small you can't tell. Yeah, absolutely, you're right. It's increasing all real numbers. So instead of, I could do negative infinity to infinity. How about decreasing? With this, when is it decreasing? What? When is it decreasing? From left to right, when does it ever start going down? Left to right. Always reads regress. Never does. never does. You're right. Never. So when we do the end behavior, we're asking this question. As x approaches to the right forever, that's infinity, f of x is approaching what value? Infinity. Infinity. Thank you. How'd you know I was going to call you, Adam? As x approaches to the left forever, anybody tell me, what is f of x approaching? Zero. You think so? Yep. Wait, is it approaching the y-intercept, or the, um, horizontal the, asymptote? the horizontal asymptote? Should it be one? It should be one. But you said something different on the video. That was when you can't, it was the ones that was the logs, where I said something about you can't approach negative infinity. So therefore, I'm kind of the jury for me was out. Of, can you really answer the question as the constant number that it was approaching in that vertical asymptote? We'll do one of those. And I should have looked up the answer, what the author had in that, but I there still have like it. There's seven forms with like no answers, like undefined, no real answer. It's possible. But definitely, as you, go, as you go to the left forever, you can go left forever. Nothing's stopping you from going left forever, Jonathan. Nothing is stopping you. The thing is, it's just getting closer and closer to this asymptote. Okay? So there's everything for a full hundred on that. That was a quiz problem. Let's do, a, let's do another one. That was a quiz problem? It, it was going to be your quiz problem today. Remember I threatened you guys with a quiz? No. Yep. But don't worry. You'll still get it. Maybe not necessarily right now. I, that's the thing, I have 14 of you that are, <laughs> I got eight of you not here. 
All right, this is not an exponential growth. This is an exponential decay because this number is, it has nothing to do with that. It has to do with the fact this number is less than 1. Now, a normal decay would look like this. Going through 0, 1 again, but it would start from the high on the left, and as it goes down, it'll approach its asymptote y equals to 0. That would be your parent function of a decay. But this one's different because there's a couple of things happening. What's minus 5 mean? It's going to shift down 5. So this whole thing would have to shift down 5. The asymptote would have to shift down 5. This ordered pair would have to shift down 5. Everything would have to shift down 5. So I'm at least going to do my new asymptote. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Exactly. Y equals to a negative 5 would be my new asymptote. Negative 4, because it's always 1. Oh, yeah. Why am I counting 5 from there? Negative oh, no, the asymptote was at 0. Yeah. Oh, asymptote was at 0. Right. Now, the ordered pair, yeah, that would have shifted down to just right here, to the four, negative 4 number. You're right. You if I was just shifting that graph down. Would it still have stayed like that high? Yeah. Would it still stay that high? No, the blue thing goes away. But what about this negative with the x? What does it mean when just the x gets negative? Mirrors on the oh. x-axis? Nope. It, be? it flips on the y-axis. Oh, no, this. Oh, so now it's a backwards graph. So it looks like it's the same. Yeah, what's going to happen is this picture, OK, Obviously, I'm not moving left or right. Is that true? What? I'm not moving left or right because there's nothing with the x. There's no number being added or subtracted. I've lost yeah. my sense of oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So this ordered pair that I put down here actually is down here. Mm -hmm. But this blue picture has to flip horizontally. So it's going to become a growth. Like it's going up. How can a decay become a growth? I no idea. <laughs> but it did. It became a growth. Because of the negative. Oh, exponent. wait. Because if you make the one it's half times the negative. Inverse of, oh. Yeah, it became a growth. Now, that may not be the best picture because I don't have good points. But uh, is, is that, is that going to be the y-intercept, though, right here at 0, negative 5? Should be, right? Because if negative x is negative 0, that would be the same as a 0. 1 half to the 0 means 1. 1 minus 4 means negative 4. Oh, yeah, the y-intercept is y equals to so 0. Yeah, so. Negative four. Zero negative <coughs> now, you could graph it and get a better picture about the rest of it. Yeah. But you don't have to to get full credit with me right now. Because we're just trying to get an idea of what these pictures look like. Okay, let's quickly answer these questions. Domain. All real. It's still all real. Negative infinity to infinity. Range. This time it changes. All real greater than negative 5? Negative 4. Negative 4. No, wait. Negative no, it has to be with the negative 5. I agree with the negative 5 going all the way up. Negative 5 should be. Negative. How about the asymptote? Uh, that, should that is y equals negative 5. Yeah, y equals to a negative 5. Is it increasing ever? It's always increasing. All real numbers, yeah. Is it decreasing ever? Well, no. 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 And as x approaches infinity to the right, f of x approaches where? Infinity. Up forever, yes. And as x approaches to the left forever, f of x goes where? Negative 5. To the negative 5. Yeah, it always approaches that horizontal asymptote. Okay, there's your review of graphing exponential. Let's review graphing log. Ooh. Oh, no. Now, here's what your parent log looks like. Inter log. Interesting thing, guys. It's related. You see how the exponential has a horizontal asymptote? The log has a vertical asymptote. You see how the parent function went to 0, 1, remember? This one goes 1, 0. What? 
one zero. I can't get it to graph it. Oh, okay. The zero one became one zero in this picture. And then the picture itself generically looks like this. It approaches the vertical asymptote, goes up, then it goes up, crosses so the that same point. Image, but flipped to the side. Yeah, it's a rotated image. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They it's are a ro mirrored by the parallel function for linear functions, right? There is a mirror image having to do with y equals to x line. Rotate, I mean, kind of like reflecting off of, reflecting it off of y equals to x, this line that goes like this. There's a reflection. Now, that's the parent function, but since this was a review, what does this plus 2 make it do? Uh, go up 2. Okay. Oh, I thought it would. Up yeah. 2. What does this minus 1 that's inside with the x cause it to do? One right. Yep. So can you just change the equation to three of, oh, uh, and then with the exponent as x minus one plus two? No, because the plus two is not inside the parentheses. Or else you wouldn't even have a shifting up two. Okay. So how do I move a vertical asymptote up two? How would that dotted line, that red dotted line, what would it look like when I shift it up two? We're only moving up two. We're only moving up two. The line should stay the same. Oh, right? the vertical. So the... that doesn't change. How about this dot at one zero? Where should it go? The asymptote should move to the right with the dot. Right one and up two, shouldn't it? You said up two, right one. Yes. So this dot up. Two, right one. It should be here. Yep. Wait a minute. My function almost looks like this, like it's going through that anyway. This could actually pass for the answer. Oh. I didn't even do anything different. There's nothing wrong with that. Oh wait a minute. There is something still wrong. There is something still wrong. Yeah. the The vertical asymptote has to move to the right one. Oh, okay. So the line. Yeah. Yeah. So that red line has to actually be here. You were right. You knew something was up with this thing, right? So I'm going to erase that red only because it's in my way. I don't know how many of you guys are drawing two pictures at the same time anyway. There. I don't need that either. That green dot, though, is important. That green dotted line is my new vertical asymptote. So I suppose it's important to uh, finish drawing that. There. So technically, the new picture looks very close to the old picture that I have. So here it goes. It's going to go asymptotic, this time on the right side of it. Up, 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 up. Then it's going to have to slowly try to cross that green dot. Close enough. There it is. Uh, what could I do better? I he wants the x-intercept this time, not y-intercept. That's harder, guys. The student that got it right this morning, they found it with their graphing calculator. But I want to show you how to do it by hand. If we're looking for a x-intercept, then y has to be 0. zero. So, zero so 0 would have to equal to log base 3 of x minus one. minus 1. When I get done with that, I go plus 2. Is that the equation? Yeah. It's not really that hard. Are you all getting this down? There's only seven of you in here, six of you in here. Can if I walk, this? if I randomly walk to any desk here, would I see you doing the right thing? Ask yourself that. Because if you're not doing it, then I don't know really why you came to school other than for the free food and the girl and boy interaction. I don't know. What else would there be to, why else would you want to be here? I will do that in a second. Let me first get rid of this plus two. Is that the easiest way to do it? Well, the easiest way probably was the graphing calculator. The person actually traced to it 
and actually found out what happened when the y was equal to 0. So let me first get rid of this uh, 2. Now you have a new equation, log base 3 of x minus 1. Then, and then as Jonathan is saying, he wants to get rid of log base 3. So exponentiate with both sides. That cancels that out, leaving 3 to the negative 2 equals x minus 1. Well, 3 to the negative 2 really means 1 over 3 squared. We saw that a minute ago. What is 1 over 3 squared? Wait, wait, wait. wait. It's, 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 wait. It's negative 2 over 3. Negative 2 to the power of 3, isn't it? Oh, is it? Because you exponentiate it to 3. So oh, negative 2 so to the power of 3. Maybe you're right. Hold on. Negative 2. Oh, yeah. No, no. It's 3 to the negative 2. Wait, 3 to the negative 2. Wait, you put, okay, the yeah, I, I, yes, I exponentiated. Ah, okay. So the negative 2 becomes the exponent, just like log base 3 became an exponent. Then, yeah, then you would be right. Can we finish this first? 1 over 9. 1 over 9. How small is that? Very small. Point one 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 one. Okay, so that means 1.111 plus the 1 is my x. So wouldn't the really answer be 1.111? We had that already, didn't we? Yeah. We already saw that. So what I'm going to write it as, I'm going to write the x-intercept to be 10 ninths, comma, 0. And that's the same thing as 1.11111. 10 nights. Now you go to the restroom. All right. So now we don't have Adam to help us out, so let's see if we can get this finished up. What's the domain of that red curve? The domain. Would it be all real numbers again? No, that was with exponential. With log, you can't go past the asymptote. And I think my new asymptote was at 1, wasn't it? 2? No, it's in green. I thought it was a 1. We, we moved 1 to the right, remember? The asymptote went 1 to the right? I know it moved 1 to the right, but like, where did it start off at? Well, close to 1, down here. Close to 1. No, x, it's not going to be on that side. X to the 0 would be undefined. Oh, okay, then, yeah. So it's 1 to infinity. The range, though, would be all real numbers. Because you can go down forever, and you can go up forever. The asymptote now is x equals to 1. And the... Increasing. Natalie, is this always increasing or just sometimes? Always. Always. So all real numbers. And I don't think it ever goes from bigger to smaller, from left to right. So that means it never decreases. As far as in behavior, as x approaches to infinity... As x gets bigger and bigger and bigger, y gets bigger and bigger and bigger. This is the question I had, Jonathan. Can I say as x approaches negative infinity? It never does. It never does approaches negative infinity. The only thing it approaches is it approaches a x equals to 1. So is as x approaches 1? No, because we're talking about n behavior. So since it doesn't have any end behavior out here, that's kind of why I said I'm going to quit answering that question. But would it make the answer valid if you were to say as x approaches 1? Yeah, you could. that would be a true question. You as x approaches a 1, f of x approaches negative infinity. That's absolutely true. That is legitimate. That is just not the question when we say end behavior. Oh, okay. 
It doesn't have any end behavior going that way. But this statement you just said is quite valid. All right. So thanks for your help on that. All right. Do you want to do another log or do you want this one on your own? Because this is what I gave for homework for the other class. I'm, I, go, I go on to the next lesson that I need to do with you, but it's really easy. It, it is easy compared to this. I had them do this problem and, oh, and that problem and these four for homework, for reviewing it. So. Yeah, this, that's what I had this morning do. And the rest, then we went on to the lesson. If you want to hear, we're solving exponential equations, and we start out with a common base. These are so easy that the first problem we do, I think you probably have a first grader at home that might be able to do it. Maybe. Yeah, I know. I almost pulled it out, didn't I? All right. I guess we could skip to that. Yeah, yeah. We just reviewed. We spent a half hour or so reviewing, which I think was important. But the best practice is just doing them yourself. Just keep doing some, doing some. Find some more on the Internet. You know, go to YouTube. Those are, for homework. Yeah, those are your homework. I'm not going to make you do homework from these right now. Right. I'm going to let this stew in your brain. All right. There's a little saying that we have in the math world that when we're solving exponential equations, here it is. If the bases are the same, then the exponents have to be the same. Because this is 3 to something equals 3 to something. That must mean the two somethings must be this equal to each other. They must be the same. So when we have an equation of two exponential functions with the same base, that means the exponents have to be the same. Hey, it makes sense. So I write. Both the things are equal to each other. That's right. So here's my simple, simple equation to solve for x. Some of you already have the answer right now. Yep. Yep. What is the answer? Eight. Okay. I don't know if he's right. Plus 9 plus 9, 2x equals 216, divided by 2, divide, x equals to 8. And if you want to check your work, look how simple it is to check your work. 3 to the 2 times the 8 minus 9 is supposed to be equal to 3 to the 7. What is 2 times 8? 3 to the 16 minus 9. The question is, is it equal? What's 16 minus 9? Seven. Is 3 to the 7 equals to 3 to the 7? Yes. Then it's, that's the good answer. All right, let's try another one. We have two exponential functions set equal to each other. Do they have the same base? But the S, do they have the same base? What is the base? Well, then, if they have the same bases, that must mean their exponents have to be equal. So I set their exponents equal to each other. And I solve this. I'm going to move the 2w over the negative 2w by adding 2w. That gives me 6w. I'm going to take the minus 1 and add 1 to both sides equals to 6. W has to be 1. Told you this was going to be easy. Or would you rather graph a whole bunch more? Uh, I think we would rather do this. <laughs> this is easier, right? Oh, then I get to this one. Not so bad either. Look at all those bases that I got. The only problem is I only want one base on the left. I don't want two bases on the left. I want one base on each side. So I have to do something else. You already had some skills. This is multiplying of two like bases. Isn't there a rule for that when they have exponents? When you multiply like bases, what do I do with the exponents? 
you add them. You keep the base, and we take the C minus 1, and I add it to 3C plus 2. Equal to the right side, 5 to the 7C plus 1. Oh, that's a plus 16. I didn't see it because I had it zoomed out, zoomed in or something. So now that Jonathan said that to rename these two bases with one base, we keep the base 5 and we add the exponents. That's what we do when we multiply like bases together with exponents. We keep the base and we add the exponents. So I'm going to rewrite that as 5 to the, the C plus 3C is 4Cs. The minus 1 plus 2 is a plus 1. Please double check my math. Well, when you snooze, you lose. Yeah, we went to the next. The homework is the last problem on that page that we haven't done, and the next four on the other side. Those are review graphing. And so now... Our homework is only this one? That one, turn it over. Oh, and all these? And the four, yeah. Four. What we just did, uh, Adam, we moved on to s solving exponential equations. Do I have freshmen? Yes. Well, sometimes some of them act like freshmen, but they're oh. not. Hey, sir. Hey. Yes, sir. How are you doing? It's good. To, ow, that's so rough. Sir, I have eczema. Oh, well, yeah, but that's really rough eczema. <laughs> that's mean. <laughs> it's like me saying if you had rough eczema. I do. Oh. <laughs> that's Sandpaper, bad. see. How are you doing? Good, how are you? Fabulous. Do you remember my name? Yes. No, you don't. What do you say you don't say? I can't say her last name. What's my first name? Sir, sir. Chrissa. Wow. What's sir, last name? name's Jarvie. I can never pronounce it. Javeri. <laughs> Juveri. Javeri. Javeri. It doesn't matter. She didn't know that person. Sir, what are you teaching? We are solving exponential equations. Oh, totally Is this pre-calculus? Yes. Oh. It's pre-cal, not calculus. I'm thinking calculus. Calculus is limiting. But pre-cal <laughs> means pre-calculus. I remember this, sir. You do, right? Yeah. I can yeah. teach this whole thing. So why are you coming looking for freshmen? Oh, we're taking pictures for you. Oh. Okay. oh. So you you want to teach the entire thing? Yes, no, sir. I, I remember. Matthias, he's, he's volunteering to be a freshman. Yeah, Matthias, you can be a freshman. A class freshman? No, Where's these are... Gone? Sir, this class They're all gone. Six people. No, but it's supposed to be 14. It's oh. a small class in general. Oh. My bio class has eight people. We had two last year. All of my classes oh. have been full. It's the underclassmen. They're taking time off. Because their parents still care. Upper so are the, you're saying our parents don't care about the Well, others? no, they trust you to make your own decisions. Well, my decision was to stay home. Yeah, you, and I see you're still here? Yeah. Responsible. You know why? Because I wanted to see you today. I'm not going to school tomorrow. Really? No, I am. Oh. Well, I'm glad to see you, too. Glad you're back. Healthy. Okay, so go take pictures. I'm going to see you. All right. Have, fun. have fun with pictures. No, sir. I'm sitting here. Okay. I like your class. They're good kids. I really want her to give it a try to teaching. Teaching is hard. It's not, it's not great. She's she can do it. She can do it. She can do it. Help me out here now. If the bases are the same, if the bases are the same, the exponents have to be the same. Yeah. And we solve it, right? So we did derivatives for this. Yeah, yeah it, it, ironically, it fell in the same point that we were doing graphing exponentials. We were like D U over U, yeah. U L N U. <laughs> yep, you got it. So what is C? C is negative 5. C is what? Negative 5. All right, it's good seeing you, ladies. And divide on both sides, and you get negative five. Anybody else agree with his answer? Because you have seen him wrong this, this today. I mean, apparently I was snoozing. So My brain has effectively just died. You were snoozing? <laughs> no, I, you said I was. You said I was. That you were. Oh no! When you, that's a you snooze, you lose. Yeah. Sir, I'm still you. 
Oh, oh, oh. Sir, do you do sophomores in the hallway always have like a speaker in your thing that you're allowed to turn? Negative 20 plus. Let's see, minus 7C, minus 7C, minus 1, minus 1. That gives me a negative 3C equals to 15. C is a negative 5. Negative four minus seven is a negative three. Negative three C is equal to fifteen, correct? Right. But that wouldn't be a negative anymore. Why not? Because I'm dividing both sides by a negative oh, three. Never mind. I'm I got that on recording. <laughs> I'm dumb. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Moving on here. <laughs> Number four. Uh, this time both sides have extra bases. So the whole deal is to still combine them to make whoop, I don't want that picture. I want this picture. I want them both to have an 8, 8 as a base. So this was going to be a little harder, guys, because I now have to take all of this and add it to all of this. So if you look at that carefully, that's a K squared, and there's no other K squares. This is a K, and it adds to 2K, so that makes it 3K. There's no constants over here, but there's a negative 9 here. So that's all four terms added together to make a quadratic. Equal to, this side is strictly 4K plus 11. Now that's what we do. I'm multiplying like bases. I keep the base and I add the exponents. But now I'm solving this equation with like bases being the same. That means the exponents are the same. So I have a k squared plus a 4k minus a 9 now equal to a... Wait, isn't that a 3k? Only? Yeah, it was supposed to be a 3k, yeah. Glad you caught that. Equals to 4k plus 11. Now, this is called a quadratic equation. How do you solve quadratic equations? you got to move everything to one side and get a zero. So the k squared will stay here. This becomes a minus 4k minus 4k. 3 minus 4 is just a, a negative 1, I think. Minus 11, minus 11, minus a 20. All equal to that zero. How do we finish solving it? Negative 9 minus 11. What, what method do we use to solve quadratics? The F word. Oh. oh, my gosh. Factoring, if it factors, right? If it factors, and I think it does, uh, probably a K minus a 5 and a K plus a 4, because 5 times 4 was 20, and one of them had to be negative. And make the big one negative since this middle term's negative. Has to be zero. Which implies that k can be a five and k can also be a negative four. Would also work up in this equation here. Two answers are possible when it's quadratic. Do we have to know which answer it is? It's both of them. They both can work. Exponential functions don't have any extraneous solutions. Oh, that's okay. Can you see number one so I know what's happening? Number one was the one for first graders. Oh, okay. uh, what number one's explaining is if the bases are the same, you can effectively throw them out of the window and just solve two x minus nine. That's kind of violent. It's oh, kind so of the, violent. The throw them out the window. The bases are like they don't really matter. They, really they won't really matter. They're the same base. Now, we could show it algebraically how they go away. We'll do that the next lesson when they're not the same. But in this case, just we'll, we'll just take our word for it. Actually, the next one's going to be kind of iffy, too. Look at it. Are the bases the same? Then we'll have to make one side base the same. How? Nine to the power of two. <laughs> Wait, what's the answer to number one? What, is it, what, is the answer? <laughs> what was the answer number one? 
What did you get? Did you solve the equation? I got eight. Yeah, it was eight. It was eight. Yeah. All right, this is where that there's not a common base, and so Jonathan's right. <coughs> if you don't have one, can you turn it into one? Yeah. The answer is not always going to be yes. It could be no. There's no way to do it. But he actually gave us the secret. Wait, but what if there is no way to make a common base? You just ignore the problem? No, it becomes a lot more work. Yikes. We'll get to that next time. But right now, I'm going to take your word. I'm going to keep 9 to the 4v minus 26 equals to 9 squared. That way, I'm able to just say the 9s go away, and I got 4v minus 26 equals to a 2. I just set those two equation, exponents equal to each other. He knew his times tables that 9 squared is 81. Oh. See, he had to realize, okay, I have a 9 I'm kind of stuck with. Can this become a 9? <coughs> and he said 9 squared. Kind of impressed that he thought that through, to be honest with you. I don't think the average person is going to think that, that I can do that. But... Jonathan is not always the average person. Unfortunately. He's an alien, sir. Here we yeah. go again. Well, you know, but he, he said he's, he's an android. He said he's not even, he, he's like, he, did you say you were the dumbest one in your family? Yep, I am. Uh, I would hate to have dinner at your house. Still an alien. I would, huh? Sharpener. Sharpener, yeah. I did have one over there. It's broken, look. It's right behind the shield. It's, it's jank. That's all I have to do it. Oh, it broke? Oh, it's not broke. You can use it. You can still use it. I think it's <laughs> All right, let's finish solving this. What is V? Oh, it's a V. Oh, I thought it was a V. No, it's a Y. Am, oh, a Y? Yeah, What's a y? y? Yeah, you're right. Y is equal to seven. Seven? Okay. Yes, nice job. Okay. All right. This time, if I'm going to use Jonathan's thought process, is it a negative one? No? You're so close. Negative, negative what? It's a negative something. It is. Well, try something in your head. I'm glad he says negative. He must realize that, that this has to be some negative exponent over here. Four, negative four? I don't Anybody? It's three, negative three. Oh, oh he was so close. It's 16 times, it's so 16 times four is 64, and you just have to make a negative, so it's one over 64. So, yeah, you could have said like four times four is 16 oh, times four another negative four. Three. Negative three. Three, negative three. No, no, he was, I, I think he was replying to it, it's a negative three, not the negative four. So now we have the same basis. So you got the negative three now is equal to a squared minus four, which by the way is quadratic again, but because you don't have any a in there by itself, you don't have to set it all equal to zero unless you want to. It's a squared minus four. Well, normally we'd say, ax squared plus bx plus c, but in this case, I have a squared, but I don't have this term. So I don't really have to set it all equal to zero. I can just solve this for a squared. a squared must be equal to 1, I think. What? I thought it was negative. Oh, yeah, well, and then you square root both sides. Well, yeah, you have to square root both sides, which is where you get a can be plus or minus 1. So you're right, Adam. It is a negative 1, but it also is the 1. Yeah, because they moved to three instead of four. Yeah. So, negative two. How are you in your notes? Uh, two. You had this one done too? No, no, no. Okay, wrap that one up so you can go. Because the next two are kind of really hard. So, no. you want to make it back in time oh, to. No. Yeah. Oh, God. Do we have to solve? No. Now, let's use the same idea, guys. My smaller base is a two. 
So, is there a 2 to a power that's a 32? Um, and if you don't know, do some math, multiplying. 2, four, two times 2 times 2 times eight, 2 six, times six, 2 eight, times eight, 2 eight, times... Eight, try them out and see what eight, it can possibly be. Two, four, eight, sixteen, thirty-two. So it's five? Yes, it would be. So two is raised to the m minus nine. Thirty-two, I'm gonna write as two to the five. But this is where it gets tricky. All of two to the five is raised to the m plus three. So now I have to ask another question that I do know you guys know the answer. How do you handle a base to a power to another power? You multiply this By multiplication. That's right. Do you so them or do you... Well, how do you multiply a 2 times an m plus 3? I'm assuming you distribute. And you'd be assuming correctly. So it's 2 to the m minus 9 has to be equal to 2 to the 5M plus, 15. plus the 15. That was the hardest part right there. Now that you've got that down to like bases set equal to each other, that means the exponents have to be equal. M minus 9 has to be equal to 5M plus 15. From there, it's just... Maybe your baby sister can do this problem now. I'm going to move 5m over, make it a negative 4m, but some of you didn't do that. Now I'm going to add 9 to both sides, making a, a 14, I think. Am I right? No, it's a Or is it? No, 20, 24 then. 24. So m must be what? A negative six. So that was a pretty tricky problem because it was a, it was different. Obviously, it was different than the other ones. I kind of like how she does her stuff. How they start out kind of easy, then they get harder as you go. But they don't jump. Sometimes a textbook will go from like problem number one to problem number twelve, you know, and I, without even practicing in the middle, you know. So I kind of like her materials. Um, okay, look at this on an 8. I've got two terms on the left-hand side. Somehow, she must be thinking I still need a common base. And if that one has a 12 to something, can this one become a 12 to something? Yeah. How do you raise it to the power of a negative 1? Oh, true. Will that do it? That would flip the thing. Yeah, that would well, it, it, yes, that would flip it. That's right. But write that what you just said, 12 to the negative 1 is the same thing as 1 12th, raised to the 4x plus 3. And then you can just multiply. And this is still a 12 raised to the x squared, right? I still, I still have another question. What if you raise 1 over 12 by negative 1? That is what you're doing. Oh, we did, we did do that. I think what you were thinking, could I take the 12 and raise it to a negative 1 make it 1 over 12? You could have, but then you have to mess up with this side too. So now I have a power to a power, which I do what? Multiply. So that turns into 12. What's 4x times a negative 1? Negative 4x minus 3. And then a, 13, a, a 3 times a minus 3. 12 to the x squared, 12 to the 2x plus 13. Okay, wow. A lot of work on this one. Like bases being multiplied together, I keep the base and do what with the exponents? You add. I add those. So x squared minus 4x. x squared minus 4x. Minus 3. Minus 3 has to be equal to 12 to the 2x plus the 13. Okay. So now I have two exponential functions with the same base equal to each other. That means the exponents have to be equal. x squared minus 4x minus 3 has to be equal to 2x plus the 13. 
Again, this is a quadratic equation that I have x squares and a 4x in there, so I have to get everything on one side. I'd probably subtract 2x and subtract the 13. x squared, what's a negative 4x subtract 2x? Minus 6x. Okay. What's a negative 3 subtract 13? Negative 16. Equal to 0. Does it factor? Maybe. I'm still behind. Me too. Because I'm thinking about those numbers. We should just throw into the quadratic equation and hope it works. Or start thinking about what are the factors of 16. Obviously, 1 and 16 doesn't Negative work. And two. Does a 2 and an 8 possibly work? Negative 8 and 2. Oh. A negative 8 and a positive 2. X minus 8, X plus 2. Yeah, I do see it gives me a negative 16. And I do see that if oh, I... Oh, that's a 16. Yeah. If, if it was an 11, that's how it was like... Oh, sorry. It's just a magic. So one of your answers would be 8, and the other answer would be a negative 2. And I, and I, mean, I am glad that Jonathan asked about extraneous answers. Like it happened before. Is it possible that one of these answers don't work? Not in this case, because the exponential functions, x can be anything. Nothing against the law. I see. Oh, that's what I mean. Okay, so how many went to left? Whew. A few dozen. Let's see. How about, I'll be happy if you wrap up these four before the bell rings. That's the last page. It is, it is. The next work on this right what now. Numbers are what numbers are nine. Nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Nine. So why don't we I'll I'll stop in and I'll, I'll bother you in a minute to make sure that we're all getting the it starts out kind of tricky. Matthias? How you doing? I usually see you more alive. Huh? I usually see you more alive. It's because you used to see me more alive? More alive. Oh, so our calculators so are alive? Are you really that sad that Tyler's not here? No, sorry. Like, you know, so you don't understand how like close I was to following the sleep day first in like my first week period. Like I just been tired all day because like my sleep schedule got so messed up. And like I, I just can't get like good sleep anymore. Yeah. So I just like need day, like days off in the You're dating. You know, I can't lie, this is a bit tricky. I already don't like numbers. First number already, right off the bat. <laughs> don't, don't be too f worried, the uh, other class, I didn't have anybody have it done uh, after two minutes. They were like, okay, we're stuck already. And, well, hey, you can't be stuck on the first one I give you on your own. They said, well, we are, what do you do, fire us? <laughs> I said, yeah, you're all fired. He's like, detention, no, give them my assessment. Yeah, <laughs> it was going to get out of my turn into your pro. You know, I have to be completely honest. I won't be able to finish in two minutes. That's it. There's, there's something weird about those numbers. So it wasn't just them? Yeah, it wasn't just them. I even got out my calculator. All right. Let, let's, be, let's be a thought-provoking set of people. Obviously, I need to create the same thing. Yes. Really? During this hard problem? Go ahead. Pastor, did you fill out a pasture, Brad? Yeah. Was there another one left? There's uh, it's no, a blank page. Only, only one left, or you had the last one? Uh, huh? the last one. Okay. Well, come and get a, come and get the other one. It's on my printer. Yeah, there is no way. Well, <laughs> yes, you can, Jonathan. Think about it. I'm my, my printer. Oh. My printer has it. My printer. My printer. Yeah, my, my. I printed some off. So go ahead, grab it. Fill out that top one and take it with you. So what goes into 49? What, what base seven. could you use? Seven. Seven what? Seven what? Seven, oh, seven squared. Seven squared. Oh. So then ask yourself, is it possible that sevens can go into 343? Like that, okay. Makes a lot more common bases. Yeah, yeah. These are all trying to convert, make a common base out of magic, you know. Hocus pocus, you know, wave your hands. And make something happen. Okay, so, thank you very much. So how many sevens go into 343? 49. 
which is made up by 7 to the second power. So it's 7 times 7 to the second power turns into what? 7 to what power? Yeah, exactly. You did it, Adam. Do I get points? Okay, Adam, points. Adam, points. Okay, so 7 to the third is all raised to the 2n minus 4. This one, okay, but I don't really want 1 over 7 squared. How can I fix it? How do I flip it again? Uh, oh, but a negative 7 over negative 1? Or 7? I can't get the words right. All right, take off his points. No! <laughs> 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 uh, <laughs> 7 squared is good, but what makes it on the top instead of the bottom? Negative 1. No. Oh. It's already a 7 squared. Oh. Um, hmm. Not a negative 1, but a negative 2. Do you see that? 7 to the negative 2 would be 1 over 49. All right, Adam, I'll put the point back. <laughs> N plus 4. All right, so now this becomes 7 to the, distribute that 3 to the 2N minus 4, 6N minus 12, thank you. I heard somebody. 7, negative, 2n, minus 8. Okay. So now that you got the same basis that equal to each other, we can take the exponents, set them equal to each other, negative 2n minus 8, and hopefully it solves. A n equals two four. Oh, it is positive four. Yeah, yeah. So it's just um, n is half? one half. Yep, it's possible. N could be just a half. Well, that's annoying. It's a little different than the other answers, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now that I realize that, I think these questions are. Different. I think they're so hideous. <laughs> So, now, when I looked at 10, I thought I could try to turn them all into 8s. 8 okay. to a power, 8 to a power, and somebody pointed me to the right direction and said, no, 8 to nothing is 128. They tried all the numbers. Oh, yeah, 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 because 8, 10, 8 to the third is 514. Five, yeah, it went too far. And 8 squared is just 64. So they said, you need to pick a smaller number than 8. Maybe a number that, that can go, okay, 4 could be 1, possibly, except... 4 to what power is 8? 4 to nothing is 8. So you would have to reduce the basis to 2. Well, I'm actually, there is a number. I mean, you could figure it out, but it's not going to be a whole number. Oh, Say it again? Yeah. Oh, use a base, base of a 2? Yeah. yeah, who said you can't even use a base smaller than a 4? You could use a base of a 2. How does 2 become an 8? To the 3. To the 3, that's right. And then that gives you the 2 minus V over there. What would you say? 2 to what? Power of 7. Oh, okay. See how that works out? And then it the works out. Yeah, it worked out pretty good, right? So now you're home free from there. Let's look at number 11. Ew. ew. I said ooh too, but because uh, I'm looking at I think we got to use a smaller power than 9. Smaller base than 9. Let's try 3. A 3? Yeah, yeah, 3. All right, so three squared. 3 squared is 9 raised to the negative P. And is there a 3 to a power that's 243? 3 to the power of 5. Are you sure? Absolutely. Oh. Yeah, he's right. 3 to the power of 5 is 243 raised to the 2p plus 6. Okay. So if, if, if you're right, and I, I don't have my times tables memorized to know that 3 to the 5th is calculator. it. Oh, calculator. 
So there's your power to a power. You're going to multiply. Here's your power to a power. You're going to distribute that one as well. Okay, let's go to 12. And you want to make a bet that I'm going to want to use a negative number for both base with both bases? Because I know 4 goes into 64, doesn't it? 4 to the third? 4 times 4 is 16. 16 times 4 is 64. Three, yep. uh, but negative 3. Neg well, I mean, but I'm going to make them negative, though, four because it's a fraction. That's 4 to the negative 1. Wait, couldn't you just use, wait, why would you use both? You, you could just use three. You could just use three. Two. Four, four, three. That would give you 164, yeah. Where are we at? I know, we're going to. Four to the negative three. We are. Didn't we already agree on that? No, I'm saying you don't have to change the second base. You can just use a normal. Three. Oh, you're saying I can just left them as a fraction? So you don't have to mess with the top exponent. And oh, I never thought of that. That one's, that one's actually, you could actually get Oh, I see what you're that. saying. You're saying I could have left this as one-fourth, and then I could have left this as one over four to the negative three, like that. Yeah, you could have kept it like that. It simplifies a lot more things. Yeah. All right, you guys could wrap those up and. uh the homework is those five graphs. All right. All right. So, everybody say goodbye to Tyler. Bye. What? Oh, Tyler. Oh, because he's not in here. Well, who else? Yeah, Etsy. Yeah, Etsy. Who else? Yeah, Emil. Maya. Emil. Maya. Who else? Yeah. Valerie. Who else? Hema. Emma. Who else? Who? Uh, Alexa. Alexa. And, oh, what the heck? Who else is not here who will never be back? Julian. Julian. Bye, Julian. It should be like uh, homework, but I'm not giving.